I'd like to tell you some stories today about how tears can soften even the hardest hearts. I was thinking about uh, that verse in Romans 12, 15 that says that one of the skills we need to develop, one of the great assets in our service for the Lord is knowing how to rejoice with those who rejoice and to weep with those who weep. Whatever else we might be able to say to people, the weeping itself communicates the love and compassion and care that sometimes words cannot communicate. But uh, not only does the Bible speak about weeping with those who weep, the Lord Jesus spoke to women on the way to the cross, and he said, don't weep for me, weep for yourselves and for your children. He anticipated the day when they would be driven from Jerusalem, and many of them would be slaughtered. And so he pled with them to take seriously their own situation and to recognize how solemn it was. But then, in addition to this, not only weeping with those who weep and weeping for ourselves, the scripture also tells us that the Lord Jesus wept for those who didn't weep for themselves. When he wept over the city of Jerusalem and said, how often I would have gathered you as a hen gathers her chicks and you would not. And the Lord Jesus wept for those who never wept for themselves. And so I want to think with you a little bit about this idea that sometimes the hardest cases are hard because sometimes we are indifferent to their needs. And if God would touch our hearts and soften us to weep for them, perhaps they would begin to weep for themselves. My son and son-in-law and another young man just returned from a trip to Cuba. And they told about a man who had traveled, I think, 12 hours by bus to come to meet with them. And now every time he prayed, he wept. A tender-hearted man in the midst of a very hard situation. I was trying to find the story of Sister Abigail. I think we've told the story of her as a child. Her father was going down to the prison where a man was condemned to death, and he was soon to be hanged. And it didn't matter what John Townsend said to the man, he was just like rock. And finally, John Townsend brought little Abigail with him into the cell. And at a certain point, she began to weep. And that was the thing that got to him. He was so hard against God and against the gospel and uh, fated to die and he wasn't prepared to even listen to the gospel but the tears of Abigail got to him where the arguments of John didn't and he put his trust in the Savior. So God has given us a method of dealing with the hard cases one story I remember from my childhood where a preacher had visited a certain area and then years later came back again. And uh, the family who was entertaining the preacher, keeping him in their home during the gospel meetings, had a young man who had hardened himself against the gospel. And it was his job to take the preacher in their cart to and from the meetings. And on the way home one night, the young man said to the preacher, I hope you're not offended by this, but I've noticed that you, you seem to have lost your touch. He said, oh, and what do you mean by that? He said, well, when I was a young boy, you came to preach and you really moved me. But he said, now I listen to you and, and you don't move me the way you did. And the preacher began to silently weep as they rode along in the in the buckboard. And, and the young man said, hey, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, said the preacher, I'm not weeping for myself. I'm weeping for you. 
Don't you see? It's you that's changed. You have become so hardened to the gospel. It's not getting through to you anymore. And it was this that led the young man to seek the Lord and to be saved. Well, a few weeks ago, I told you the story about one of the prisoners who's a dear friend of mine, Ronnie. And uh, recently, talking on the phone with him, he told me this testimony, and I'd like to share it with you. He was very eager that you should hear the story. He said, you know, uh, back in 1997, 1998, somewhere in there, uh, he was at Parchman Prison, and he was in an area of the prison. The prison is huge, hundreds and hundreds of acres, and there are these satellite prisons on the property, and he was in a, an area called Camp 23. And Camp 23 did not have walls around it. It had bars, like the fence was like bars all the way around. And that's where the fellows were kept. And um, there was a lady, a little white lady. He said, you know, the, the cartoons that we used to watch as children with Tweety Bird and the little lady that owned Tweety Bird. He said, this lady looked just like her. And um, uh, she would actually stop the cars in the town where she was. She would wave them down, and she would tell them, um, uh, you need to donate some money to help these prisoners. They don't have toothpaste or toothbrushes or soap or deodorant. Can you give me something to help these prisoners? She would... She would uh, encourage people to come with her to the prison. And uh, she found a, a black lady who had a beautiful singing voice, and so she brought her along to sing uh, gospel songs to the men. And uh, then she found a, a fellow named Bill. Uh, she met him at a gas station, and he knew a little bit about the word, so she uh, constrained him to come and to preach to the men through the bars. But he said that this woman, her name was uh, Miss, Miss Nell, uh, Miss Nell would come and, and she would go right up to the bars and she'd reach her hand through the bars and she'd touch the prisoners. And the prisoners would come to get close to her. They thought she was an angel. And she would place her hands on them and she would weep. And he said, I couldn't stand it. Like I, He said, I was hard against the gospel. I was determined never to follow the Lord. The Lord had taken my mother from me, and, uh, and I said, I, I'll never serve you. I will never serve you. And so he was hardened against this, but he said, I couldn't stand this woman weeping. And as she would weep, she would, she would quote the scripture. She would pray, Lord Jesus, please help me get these men out of here. They need to know how much you love them. And she would, in her, in her weeping, she would quote John 3.16 to these men. And uh, he said, I, I couldn't stand it. But he said, this was the, the only woman I knew who wept over me. And I would come to her and say, please stop crying, please. And she would say, well, someone has to weep for you boys. And she would plead with God to save these boys. Oh, by the way, Miss Nell, she would, she would do this. Then she'd go to the next section. Every week she would come and she'd work her way all the way around this facility, reaching in and touching the men and praying for them and weeping over them. God worked so mightily in Camp 23 that they popularly changed the name of the camp to Psalm 23 because of the godly influence of weeping Miss Nell. He told me about another man who came. In those days, they would let the prisoners have some money that they could then use at the commissary to buy some things. They, they don't allow any cash there now, but in those days they did. And, um, and this man would come and he, he would say, do you need some money? And he would hand out $5 bills. And, and Ronnie thought he must have a mental problem, like surrounded by murderers and thieves. 
and and walking around with a wad of cash and handing out money to them. He said, somebody's going to kill this man to take all this money. And he said, uh, why was he doing this? He said, I, I thought he must have a serious mental problem until he said, I saw him in the middle of a prayer group outside the, the, the prison yard where he was. Here was a group of people and he was standing in the middle of this prayer group and he was crying like a baby. And he said, I knew he must be in the same group. He must be the same kind of person as Miss Nell with a broken heart for men with hard hearts. And he said, this was the beginning of the softening of my heart like the rain on, on hard, hard soil, softening it up to ma make preparation for the good seed. And what does the scripture say? He that goes forth bearing precious seed and weeping shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bearing his sheaves with him. I'm I'm afraid this is out of my territory. I'm not I'm not a weeper, but I do know this. In the words of Adnaram Judson, we cannot hope to be reapers and gather the ripe golden ears until we have first been weepers and watered the furrows with tears. <laughs>